Coming up next on the season premiere of Hooton's Arkansas Football. A look ahead to the 2002 high school season. Classification by classification. Who will win Class 2A now that Shallow Christian has moved up? Can anyone in Class 3A catch defending champion Warren? Will Stuttgart make it back to Little Rock and win it all? And can Tradition Rich Springdale capture Class 5A and coach Gus Malzahn's second season at the school? A preview of those teams and many more from around the state. It's all in the next 30 minutes on Hooton's Arkansas Football. You stuck it to him and you won it! This is our time of the year. Hello and welcome to Hooton's Arkansas Football. I'm Chad Hooton and this is the first of 18 shows that we'll air this fall on high school football. And believe it or not, the season's not too far away. In just 16 days, the high school football season will kick off in grand style at War Memorial Stadium on Labor Day. Six teams have agreed to move their season up four days. So on Monday, September the 2nd, Labor Day at War Memorial Stadium, this is the lineup. It'll be Pulaski Academy against Benton at 11 a.m. Then it's Bryant against Shallow Christian and Springdale against Warren. Should be three great games to kick off the high school football season in the Alltel Hootens.com kickoff classic. And tickets are on sale now from the participating schools. Now tonight on the season premiere of Hooton's Arkansas Football, we'll preview those teams and many more, and we'll get started with Class 2A. The schools are a little bit smaller, but those guys play with a lot of heart. The one thing you can count on in AA football the past five seasons was for Shallow Christian to play for the state championship. And that's why 2002 is so intriguing. Shallow has moved up to Class 3A, leaving the field open for two new teams to land in Little Rock. Hooton's front runner is another private school, Harding Academy led by All-State quarterback Caleb Keyes. Keyes passed for 3,400 yards and 31 touchdowns last year using a fleet of tall receivers like All-Stater Heath Adams. Keyes also is a physical runner, and the Harding defense should be its best in years too. But before the Wildcats can win the state title, they must survive the biggest, baddest league in 2A. The 6AA boasts six top 20 teams, including 2001 state runner-up and our preseason number three team, Augusta. All-state fullback Antonio Gant and running mate James Turner both rushed for close to 1,600 yards and 17 touchdowns last year. Ryzen is our preseason number four team. The Wildcats captured the state championship in 2000, and more than 30 Wildcats are heavy favorites to roll through the new 8AA conference. You know, it's going to be some new teams, be some new rivalries developing. I know there's a lot of talent down there, don't know a whole lot about them. The way our schedule was with those four in a row, Junction City, Smack Over, Hampton, Harmony Grove, emotionally it took its toll. So just the change of schedule will help us as far as, uh, you know, Alzheimer, Dermot, I think both of them are going to be tough, but they'll be spread out a little bit. So, you know, we kind of peak for those games. The Charleston Tigers start the year at number five, and they're also on the move, shifting from the four to the one AAA, where the Tigers should capture their 11th league title in 15 years. Quarterback Doc Crowley is one of the best in the state in any classification. The senior completed 60% of his passes last year for 21 touchdowns with just four interceptions. Charleston's move leaves up and coming Danville as the team to beat in the 4AA. Danville is led by three-year starting quarterback Joseph Short and some not so little Johns up front. Albert Villadrosa, he'll be a three-year starter at offensive tackle, uh, two-way player. He's the strongest kid we have on the team and uh, uh, you know, he uh, look, look for a lot of things from him. He's about 270, 75 pounds. If Danville should slip, Hector, under new coach Brian Rust, or Arkansas Baptist could grab the 4AA title. We've got a new conference with uh, a lot of the Little Rock public school, uh, private schools in it, and uh, we expect good things. We're uh, real optimistic. I think we've got a, a good chance to uh, be competitive. We're going to compete with uh, some tough teams, uh, Hector and Danville, that uh, have a little bit of tradition, but uh, we're looking forward to... Uh, to meeting them and, and uh, seeing how we stack up. 
And here is Hooton's Arkansas Football Class 2A preseason rankings. Finally, with Shiloh Christian out of the way, Harding Academy starts the year at number one. But don't forget, it was Danville and Camden Harmony Grove that left Searcy with playoff victories the past two years. Junction City checks in at number two. We'll have more on the talented Dragons next week. Augusta has a new coach. We'll see if they have the same results. Ryzen is at number four, and there's Charleston. Barton starts the second five. This could be Frank McClellan's final season with the Bears. Then it's Hampton and Danville. Hughes drops down from Class 3A to AA, and Gurdon rounds out the top ten. Carlisle is at number 11. Coach James Clayton says this is his farewell tour. Mark Trees, number 12, then it's Mineral Springs, and Hazen, the number 14 team in the state, but the Hornets may not even make the playoff field of 32 teams because the Hornets are in a nest called the 6AA. Murfreesboro's number 15, the Buckaroos are 16, then it's Jesseville, Hooton's surprise pick to win the 5AA, look out for Jesseville. Then it's Desart, Salem, and Boxite, who was picked by the coaches to win that 5AA. Coming up next, more of Hooton's Arkansas football. A preview of Class 3A is next. Football fans, your wait is over. The 2002 high school season kicks off in grand fashion on Labor Day at War Memorial Stadium in the alltellhootons.com kickoff classic. Catch the triple header with past happy Pulaski Academy taking on Big Bad Benton. Then tradition rich Shiloh Christian steps up against Bryant. And defending state champ Warren takes on 5A superpowers Springdale. Get your tickets at participating schools. The first three real games of the season. It's the alltellhootons.com kickoff classic. Labor Day at War Memorial Stadium. And we'll begin our Class 3A preview with defending state champion Warren. The Lumberjacks were the only team in Arkansas to go undefeated last year, and Arkansas coach Houston Nutt has already offered scholarships to three of Warren's returning starters, including All-American Brett Smith, the state's top recruit. Hog fans will get a chance to see number one Warren in Little Rock when the Lumberjacks square off against Class 5A giant Springdale in the first real game of the season. It's the Alltel Hootons.com kickoff classic at War Memorial. It's just you know a great honor to be to play in the Hootons kickoff classic, and you know we just hope we can compete with Springdale. They're a big 5A power. You know you hear all the time on Hootons how, how the 5A West is dominant, and you know we're gonna we're gonna show up. I can promise you we're gonna be there about at four o'clock at kickoff. We'll be there. The tradition-rich Boonville Bearcats almost beat Warren in the state title game last year, but the Bearcats must find successors for four graduated players in the backfield who combined to rush for a mind-boggling 4,683 yards last year. Look for a stifling defense led by senior linebacker Kyle Arnold to carry Boonville far this season. The Pulaski Academy Bruins won 11 games last year, but must find successors for the graduated All-State duo of quarterback Thomas Thrash and receiver Quentin Jones. Six-foot-four junior Adam Thrash has skills and inherits the spot vacated by his older brother at QB. Senior receiver Blake Miller has 4-4 speed and caught 100 passes a year ago. On defense, Pulaski Academy's defensive line was hit hard by graduation, but the linebackers and secondary should be some of the best around, led by junior all-conference linebacker Matt Stoltz. We got a real good group coming back. We graduated 10 seniors who all contributed, so there's going to be some big shoes to fill. But we feel like that we've got an outstanding uh, senior class and then an outstanding junior class who are really going to step up and contribute. It's their time to step up and be the leaders and uh, they've had some good spring times and they did a good job at the uh, uh, combine at Alltel and uh, they've just done a tremendous job. So it's their time to uh, step up and be our players this year. Of course, one of the most intriguing teams in Class 3A this year should be Shiloh Christian. After playing in five straight Class 2A state championship games, the Saints move up to AAA. National record-setting quarterback Rhett Lashley has graduated and just six starters are back. But in seven-on-seven -seven competition, the Saints came on strong late this summer. The Star City Bulldogs finished fourth in the eight AAA last year, but advanced all the way to the state quarterfinals. With scholar-athlete Andy Eklund at quarterback and Randy Williams returning at running back, Star City's ground-oriented attack should wear down opponents this fall.
And here is Hooten's Arkansas Football Class 3A rankings. The Lumberjacks are on top and Booneville's number two. That's exactly where those teams finished last year. Osceola drops down from Class 4A and the Seminoles should be tough to handle in Class 3A. Then it's the Hillbillies, Pulaski Academy. The Scrappers are at number six, followed by Ashdown, Newport, Shallow Christian, and Star City. The Sand Lizards start the second ten. Then it's Gosnell, Dumas, Hamburg, and Rivercrest. The Queen is at number 16. Then it's Pocahontas, Truman, Farmington, and Pulaski Oak Grove at number 20. Now the Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week. Star City quarterback Andy Eklund can beat you in many ways. His favorite, on the ground, where he leads the Bulldogs option attack with 4-4 speed. But college recruiters are just as pleased to hear about his numbers in the classroom, where Eklund holds down a 3.8 GPA and has already scored a 28 on his ACT. I make sure I get on my work in, make sure, you know, try to keep good grades. Because, I mean, yeah, you got to be eligible to play football. So if you're not eligible, you're, you're not going to play. It's as simple as that. Congrats to Andy Eklund, the Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week. Thanks a lot, Mark, and congratulations to Andy, our Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week. The Star City Bulldogs will open their season on Friday night, September the 6th, against the England Lions. Coming up next, more of Hooten's Arkansas football, a preview of Class 4A next. Faulkner County football, Hooten's Arkansas football, brought to you by Sonic. And we begin our Class 4A preview in Arkansas County, where the Stuttgart Ricebirds won 10 games last year and came within two points of winning their first state title in 20 years. This fall, athletic Freddie Dancy moves from receiver to quarterback and succeeds Chris Lammers, who signed with Washita Baptist. On defense, second-year coach Bobby Bolding's bunch should be salty. The defense will be led by a couple of big boys up front. Brett Helms, who tips the scales at 275 pounds, and Donnell Horner, who has good speed despite weighing a sausage pizza over 300. The Greenwood Bulldogs averaged 31 points per game last year, and senior standouts Kirby Vitale and Matt Johnson return at quarterback and tailback respectively. Vitaly is a college prospect. He passed for more than 3,000 yards and 29 touchdowns last year. Coaches in the 4A Southwest believe the Hope Bobcats are in line to capture their third straight conference title. Of course, Hope hasn't lost a league game in the past two years. And senior quarterback Brock McCorkle has the leadership qualities to direct another perfect conference mark. The, the expectations are high simply because the Bobcats haven't lost a conference game in two years. Coach Kevin Stamp has turned this program completely around. Uh, they're the team, maybe not the most talented team in the conference this year. A lot of people are looking at Pulaski Robinson, Magnolia, but the Bobcats have uh, a program that is long on desire. They've really got things going as far as their intensity, playing each game, coming out, playing their hearts out. The key guy on offense, you have to start with the quarterback, Brock McCorkle. Brock is a returning all-conference player. Uh, he's not a flashy passer. He's not a flashy runner. He's just a kid that doesn't make a lot of mistakes, a great leader on the offensive side of the ball. They have another young man, Martez Floyd, that will get the bulk of the running duties this year. He'll be replacing the great back, D.D. Holyfield. And uh, Martez got a lot of playing time last year. He has great quickness. Uh, we're looking for big things from Martez. Hope's biggest hurdle in the conference this year could be Pulaski Robinson. The Senators returned 17 starters from a team that won eight games last year. All-conference running back Gary Anderson Jr. and left tackle Nathaniel Garner were both offered scholarships in the spring by the University of Arkansas. A dark horse team in Class 4A could be the Batesville Pioneers. Coach Dave King has slowly integrated a passing attack that could create havoc, especially this fall in a weaker 4A East Conference. We've been in the playoffs five of the last six years, but really it's kind of disappointing that uh, you know we just can't get that playoff win. First year or two, our kids were real happy just to be there, but it uh, seemed like we've played some good halves, but just hadn't been able to put a game together, and we're going to have to uh, really focus on that and uh, if we're going to get over the next time, which is winning a playoff game, we're going to have to really focus on being a little mentally tougher, I guess, when it comes to playoff time. Defensively, probably uh, build the defense around Lonnie Clark. He's a return All-State player, uh, played defensive tackle for us last year. and 20 years as a head coach, uh, it's the first year, I think, that I've had a defensive lineman be the leading tackler. So uh, Lonnie's real active, 
we can put him in an inside linebacker position. I think he'll be a great defensive player for us there. A pair of Pulaski County teams dropped from Class 5A to the 4A Southeast this fall. Mills won six games and advanced to the playoffs a year ago behind the running of Farad Jackson. The University of Arkansas has offered scholarships to both Jackson and Comet lineman Marcus Harrison. Sylvan Hills also drops down in classification and strong-armed senior quarterback Colby Sanders hopes to lead the Bears to the playoffs. And here is a look at Hooton's Arkansas Football Class 4A rankings. Stuttgart made it to War Memorial Stadium last year, and we expect a return trip from the Rice Birds this December. Greenwood won it all a couple of years ago. We think the Bulldogs can make it back to the Rock as well. Magnolia is a bit of a surprise at number three. The coaches didn't even vote Magnolia to win its conference. Mills is at number four, and there's Pulaski Robinson. Win won it all last year, and the Yellow Jackets start the second five. Then it's the Airedales, Hope, Batesville, and Sylvan Hills. The Golden Goblins start the second ten. They're followed by Crossett, Monticello, Morlton, and Clarksville. West Helena, 16. Then it's Arkadelphia, Green County Tech, Hot Springs, and Little Rock Fair. Now the Sports Medicine Tip of the Week from Martin Bowen Hepley and Soft Football. Brought to you by First Security Bank. And we begin our Class 5A preview with our preseason favorite, Springdale. The Bulldogs advanced to the playoffs last year despite returning just two starters. This fall, nine regulars are back, including six on defense. And the offense? It averaged 30 points per game last year and should be even better in its second season under Coach Gus Malzahn. You know, we, we feel like we'll have a decent defense. Offensively, it just depends on, you know, how quick we progress. It's tough. We're playing three uh, defending state champions. So open up with Warren. They've got as much talent as any, anybody that uh, has since people have been running the spread offense. Springdale is Hooten's pick to win it all, but coaches say Russell is the team to beat in the 5A West. But what do the coaches know? Last summer, they voted the Cyclones to finish dead last in the league, and they won it, sweeping the conference. Cyclone quarterback Landon Leach and touchdown Tracy Steiger return. Leach completed close to 60% of his passes last year for 3,200 yards. Steiger was All-State as a sophomore last season when he scored 15 TDs. Hooton's Arkansas football expects West Memphis to dethrone Cabot in the East Conference. Sorry, Cabot, but we think West Memphis could win it all. Second-year coach Lanny Dalks' team lost by just one point at Texarkana in the second round of the playoffs last season. Speaking of Texarkana, the Razorbacks might be Class 5A's most talented team this year. The Porkers are loaded with imposing linemen, speedy skill players, and a solid kicking game. Another top 10 team should be Bryant. After advancing to the playoffs a year ago as a member of the 5A South, the Hornets moved this fall into perhaps the state's weakest league, the 5A Central Conference. Senior quarterback Lance Parker is being recruited heavily by Vanderbilt and is poised to break all of Bryant's passing records. I'm not the kind of person that's satisfied with where I'm at, and I just, you know, the main thing is my team winning, and I'd, I'd take 500 yards passing if I knew we could win 10 games, so it's not, I'm not really too much, that much concerned about passing stats. Bryant's biggest rival is Benton, and both the Hornets and the Panthers will open their seasons four days earlier than other schools in the state at the AllTellHootens.com kickoff classic on Labor Day at War Memorial Stadium. Benton will play pass-happy Pulaski Academy, and the Panthers are expected to do more passing this season, too. Senior quarterback Brian Greer leads 10 returning offensive starters at Benton. We're very optimistic. We have a starting quarterback that's back, and that's always great. Uh, we have a kicking game that uh, hopefully I think will be second to none. Uh, we spend a tremendous amount of time in the kicking game working on the intangibles there, and uh, I think we probably have the best kicker and punter a tandem duo in the state, uh, Jared Little, uh, being recruited by most every major college in the United States right now. So Springdale will open the season at number one and West Memphis at number two. Then it's Fort Smith Southside, the Razorbacks, and Russellville. El Dorado made it to Little Rock last year. The Wildcats start the second five. They're followed by Cabot, Bryant, Conway, and Fort Smith Northside. A sleeper team to watch is Fayetteville. The Purple Dogs look dangerous. Then it's Searcy, Pine Bluff, Rogers, and Jacksonville. Little Rock McClellan's number 16. They're followed by last year's state champions, Bentonville. 
Then it's the Pointers in Little Rock Central and Mark Jones's Benton Panthers at number 20. Now, the Arkansas Department of Higher Education Spirit Student of the Week. Oh, you better watch it. A strong sense of family drives Amanda Burris to succeed. Well, this kid's not just my kid, this is my best friend. The bond between Amanda and her mother helps the Atkins Senior deal with the everyday rigors of being in high school. My kid, I get to brag, she's not in trouble, she's a good student. People in this town know who she is but it's because she's earned that reputation of not being a troubled kid. It's that reputation that helped Amanda succeed in band, athletics, and even on the runway. Miss Atkins was a great big surprise for me, actually. I was standing there just almost in tears when they called my name, I was so surprised. But... Catch Amanda if you can, on the field and off. She excels in her academics and her activities. Well, the band, we're, we're really spirited. I mean, we get up there and if we're not playing, we're all standing up screaming and hollering for the football team. But Amanda's school spirit isn't limited to football games. My grades are very important. Amanda knows the importance of keeping her grades in good standing. Well, my academics definitely come first because if I don't have my academics up, then I can't do the other things that I enjoy. And so I always study first and then I find time to do other things. Classification this year. Wynn won it all a year ago in Class 4A, but the Yellow Jackets must reload. In Class 3A, can anyone catch Warren? 15 teams couldn't last year. And in AA, we're guaranteed a new champion since Shiloh Christian has moved up. Highlights, interviews, preseason rankings, and more. In the next 30 minutes on Hooton's Arkansas Football. You stuck it to him and you won it! This is our time of the year. Hello and welcome to Hooton's Arkansas Football, our second of three preseason shows as we count down to the 2002 high school season. And it's closer than you may think. In just nine days here at War Memorial Stadium in Little Rock, the 2002 high school season will kick off in grand style in the Altel Hootons.com kickoff classic. Three real games, not scrimmages, real games that count toward the team's final record. Full-fledged ball games, and look at the first one. Benton against Pulaski Academy. Everyone from Saline County should be here because Benton plays PA in the first game and then Bryant plays Shiloh Christian. Should be two great matchups. And then in the third game, if there were an overall state championship in high school football, I really believe that Warren and Springdale could be the two teams that played for that overall state championship. And the great thing is we get to see them play the first week of the season even four days earlier than all the other high school teams in the state. So we're looking forward to that on Monday, September the 2nd here at War Memorial Stadium. We'll talk more about those teams and teams from all over our state in the next 30 minutes as we look ahead to the 2002 season, classification by classification. And tonight, we will start with the big boys in Class 5A. The Bentonville Tigers won the state's largest classification last season with little flash and lots of seniors. Bentonville won in the playoffs at Cabot and at Texarkana before beating El Dorado in the title game. Expectations aren't nearly as high at Walmart headquarters this year. Sonic Super Team receiver Drew Denny is one of only three returning starters at Bentonville. The only team to beat Bentonville last season was Russellville, and the Cyclones are voted by coaches in the West to repeat as champion of the state's toughest conference. Sonic Super Teamer Drew Dickerson leads the Cyclone defense, and seven starters, led by quarterback Landon Leach and receiver Tracy Steiger, are back for an offense to tally 26 points per game last season. We've got seven, seven really good ones on offense, and we think we've got some kids that uh, will replace uh, some of the ones we lost, and uh, you know, we, we're going to be pretty good on offense. You know, the key is going to be the other side of the ball. No 5A team has more playoff tradition than Fort Smith Southside. Coach Barry Lunny's bunch advanced to the semifinals again last year. The Rebels have reloaded at linebacker, and junior quarterback John Thomas continues the Southside tradition of college prospect QBs. 
Don't underestimate Kevitt's offense. The Panthers' T formation tallied 30 points per game last year. Just three starters are back this fall, but junior Chris Robertson is one of them. Robertson is set to break all of Cabot's rushing records with two more solid seasons. Bryant likes to spread the field, often using five receiver sets to light up the scoreboard. Hornet quarterback Lance Parker has committed to Vanderbilt and will show the state his skills against Shiloh in the AllTellHootens.com kickoff classic on Labor Day at War Memorial Stadium. Coach must be crazy for even wanting to play Shiloh. Uh, we appreciate the, uh, the invitation to play in uh, the Hootens Classic. And, you know, it's something that uh, across the state everybody looks, at, looks up to and, and uh, gets excited about. And Bryant's no different. You know, our town and community will be behind us and uh, they're excited to go play in it. And here is a look at Hootens Arkansas Football Class 5A rankings. Springdale opens the season at number one. The Bulldogs are also getting prepared for the AllTellHootens.com kickoff classic. They'll be taking on the Warren Lumberjacks. A little bit more on that matchup later. West Memphis is at number two. There's the Rebels. Texarkana at number four. And the Cyclones at number five. El Dorado starts the second five. Then it's Cabot, the Hornets, Conway, and Fort Smith Northside. Fayetteville's a team to watch at number 11. There's Cersei moving up from 4A to 5A, but they'll still be a contender for the East Conference Championship. The Zebras are 13, then it's the Mountaineers in Jacksonville, Little Rock McClellan 16, there's Bentonville, then it's the Pointers, Little Rock Central, and Benton at number 20. The Panthers open the season against Pulaski Academy, and we'll have more on that matchup in just a bit. Now, the Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week. Conway's Drew Bell gets the job done. Whether it's on the field where he's a mainstay on the Wampus Cats offensive front or in the classroom where he's already scored a 33 on the ACT. To give you an example of how important academics are to Drew, he scored a 32 on his ACT as a sophomore, but that wasn't good enough. He went back and took it again. You basically have to give it all you have all the time. You have to be willing to do what it takes to, you know, get get that win and take your team you know, as far as you possibly can. And I think a lot of that transfers back to the classroom where you have to work hard and sometimes make sacrifices to you know, make the grade you want to make. Good advice from Drew Bell, the Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week. Thanks a lot, Mark, and congratulations to Drew Bell, our Marine Scholar Athlete of the Week. Coming up next, more of Hooton's Arkansas football. A look ahead to Class 4A is next. Football fans, your wait to you by First Security Bank. And we begin our Class 4A preview with last year's state champions, the Win Yellow Jackets, who won it all last year for the first time since 1985 with an electrifying 34-33 win over Stuttgart in the title game. Defensive stars Ben Fowler, Ashana Reed, and Michael Gray are back, and they should help the Yellow Jackets win their third conference title in four years. Win's biggest concern is inexperience on offense. Graduated All-State quarterback Rob Lawson, whose granddad actually played on Win State title team back in 1950, he was a tremendous leader last year. And current University of Memphis running back D'Angelo Williams will also be missed. The Hope Bobcats have lost just three games the past two years, and all three of those losses were to teams who have played for state championships. The talented Bobcats are the coaches picked to repeat as 4A Southwest champions. Defensively, this is a football team that has, their bread and butter is running to the football. Coach Stamp has said and has talked about on our show many times that uh, it's controlled chaos is what it is. And uh, these kids are like Frank Broyles' old uh, Razorback teams from the 60s and 70s, the Red Ants. I mean, they swarm to the football. Three years ago, it was the Alma Airedales who advanced to the state championship game. Alma won 10 games last year, but just five starters are back. But teams in the West should not get complacent. Alma teams seem to be most dangerous when they're not highly regarded. Look for defensive stars Josh Bennett and Nate Elmore to carry the Airedales far again this year. Staying in the West, Harrison wrestled that league title and the state title away from Alma in 1999, but the Goblins haven't been back to the playoffs since. Coach Tommy Tice thinks quarterback Rusty McIntyre and receiver Brent Rawson can be one of the better tandems in the league. If Harrison cuts back on its turnovers, the Goblins could return to the top of the 4A West. 
Alma and Harrison will be joined in the West Conference this year by newcomer Clarksville. The Panthers move up to Class 4A after winning nine games last year, and Coach Michael Banning is looking forward to the challenge of playing in a different league. We're going to a conference that has been very successful over the last uh, several years. Uh, football is very important in that conference, and Pierce Kern will be a safety. He probably never come off the field. We feel like he is the best kicker in the state. He was eight out of 11. Six of those eight were over 40 yards, school record 49 yarder. There is no shortage of talent in Hot Springs. The Trojans had four players sign Division I scholarships after last season. The Trojans are again loaded. Nasty defensive lineman Rodney Giles has been offered a scholarship from the University of Arkansas. It appears the talent and speed are set for Hot Springs to win at least half its games this year and make a run at the playoffs for the first time since 1996. Last year's state runner-up, Stuttgart, opens the season at number one this year. The Ricebirds are looking for their first state title since 1982. Greenwood is at number two, and Magnolia's a surprise at number three. Then it's the Mills Comets. Mills should be dangerous, dropping down from Class 5A. The Comets are followed by another Pulaski County team, Robinson. Seventeen starters are back for the Senators, and this is the year Pulaski Robinson has been pointing toward. Wynn starts the second five, then it's Alma. Hope's seniors have never lost a conference game, and the Bobcats are at number eight. Then it's Batesville and Sylvan Hills, another team to watch for, dropping down from Class 5A. Harrison starts the second ten, then it's Crossett, the Billies, the Devil Dogs, and Clarksville. West Helen is number 16, followed by Arkadelphia. The Badgers have a new coach and different starters at 14 positions this year. Then it's Green County Tech, the Trojans, and Little Rock Fair, rounding out the top 20. Now, the brought to you by Sonic. Who's the best team in the state? We are! Guys, the road to the rock starts tonight. The road to the rock starts tonight, and we're going to kick their butt. We are! And we'll begin our Class 3A preview in Bradley County, where before last season, Warren had never even won a conference championship. But that all changed last season when the Lumberjacks swept the 8 AAA conference on their way to the 2001 state title. Now, Warren has a target planted firmly on its chest, but 16 starters are back, including up to four Division I recruits. We got a whole offensive line back, uh, all five of them, Matt Salviti, Josh Williams, uh, uh, Justin Sanders, Justin Green, and um, and Adam Weaver. We got you know three wideouts back in Roshan, Brett, and T Rod. So you know we 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 feel pretty good about our offense. And and then Terrence Ingram's back at the one back. And uh, so offensively we should be competitive. And defensively we got our leading tackler back in Caleb Bateman. The people are there for us to make a good run, but we just got to come together again. Warren has wore out Nashville the past two seasons, and that rarely happens to the Scrappers. Down at Nashville, they've won 82% of their games over the past 11 years under coach Billy Laird, and with fleet-footed running back Willie Hobson back at Nashville, the Scrappers are poised to make a run at the state semifinals for an amazing ninth time in 10 seasons. Hobson could also fill in at quarterback, and he may be the team's best defender, too. The Pulaski Academy Bruins have won 21 games over the past two seasons, and Coach Kirby Norwood believes they can drive deep into the playoffs this fall, but the Bruins open the season in just nine days against Class 5A Bruiser Benton. That's on Labor Day, Monday, September the 2nd. The AllTailHootens.com kickoff classic at War Memorial Stadium. It's the first full-fledged high school game of the season. It's at the Big House in The Rock. And PA takes on Benton at 11 o'clock Labor Day morning. And uh, we're really excited to play a 5A team just to prove everybody we're not just a 3A team. We can play with the, the big dogs. Coaches in the 6 AAA believe that Lone Oak may be the team that pushes Pulaski Academy this year. The Jackrabbits and first year coach Marcel Vincent have 10 starters back, including running back Floyd McBride. But the bulk of the talent is a young bunch, the sophomore class at Lone Oak. So the Jackrabbits should get better as the season progresses. We're a little bit smaller than we've been in the past, uh, both offensively and defensively in the line, than you know the Lone Oak's been in the past. And I feel like that we've got some great kids coming up, young players that will be in 10th grade next year. And uh, uh, if we can just keep our tradition of playing really good, strong defense going, 
I think it'll help us tremendously. Dreams of a conference title are alive in Dardanelle, where the Sand Wizards are moving from the top four AAA to the not-so-rugged five AAA. Besides having one of the most interesting mascots in the state, Dardanelle also features an offense that has averaged close to 30 points a game over the past two seasons. And the defense should be beasting, loaded with speed. Dumas changed offenses at midseason last year and went on to finish within two games of playing for the state title. Now that the ultra-quick Bobcats and quarterback Anthony Gray have experience running the wishbone, they should score plenty of points this fall. Gray was offered a scholarship by the University of Arkansas in the spring, but speedy classmate Kerry Harris may be the team's best running back. Harris scored an amazing five touchdowns that covered at least 90 yards last year. Central Arkansas Christian will shoot for the playoffs this year in the 6th AAA. The Mustangs won just three games last year, but the numbers are up at CAC. 40 players participated in off-season drills for second-year coach Tim Perry. Well, we're very excited about this coming season. We felt like uh, last year was a learning experience for both us as coaches and, and the players. Stephen McMullen started every game last year at quarterback. He'll be a junior this year. Uh, Steven's an outstanding young man, tremendous work ethic. And here's a look at Hooton's Arkansas Football Class 3A rankings to start the season. The Warren Lumberjacks are on top. Warren was the only team in Arkansas to go undefeated last year. The defending state champs are gearing up for Springdale on Labor Day. Boonville's at number two, then it's Osceola, Ozark, and Pulaski Academy. The Bruins are the winningest team in Pulaski County over the past eight years. Nashville starts a second five. The Scrappers are expected to regain the 7 AAA title this fall. Ashdown is at number seven. The Panthers are the defending seven AAA champs. Then it's Newport, Shiloh Christian. Coach Chris Wood says the Saints defense improved during the summer. Star City's number 10 and Dardanelle starts the second 10. Then it's Gosnell. The Pirates are loaded at the skilled positions. Dumas is number 13. Then it's Hamburg and Rivercrest. The Colts almost beat Boonville in the playoffs last year. DeQueen is number 16. Then it's the Redskins, Truman, the Redbirds, Farmington at number 19. Coach Brian Law's Cardinals have won 20 games the past two Two years and Pulaski Oak Grove rounds out the top 20. They and we'll begin our Class 2A preview with a couple of teams from the 7AA East Conference, and both of them have a chance to make it to Little Rock. First, the Hampton Bulldogs. Hampton shared the 7AA East title last year with Harmony Grove. Hampton opens the season number seven, even though they're running low on numbers, just 23 players. But Sonic Super Team linebacker Wesley Abels returns. Abels ran for 1,200 yards last year and led the Bulldogs with 98 tackles. Senior lineman Trey Herod, Drew Duncan, Brad Johnston, and Brandon Evans will open holes for Abels. Evans also closes holes from his linebacker spot. He had 50 tackles last year. The other juggernaut from the 7AA East is Junction City. The Dragons have won 32 of their past 35 conference games. Coach David Carpenter promises more passes this fall with Sonic Super Team quarterback Philip Davis. But Junction City's wishbone backfield is again stocked with talented runners. A familiar face will be missing from the 7AA East this year. Ryzen has moved to the new 8AA, and the Wildcats open the season ranked number four in the state. Marcus Lewis is a guy that started three years for us, weighs about 285 pounds, and squats 500, and has done a good job for us, and I'm expecting him to step his game up this year. And, and you know, we've got several guys there. Kyle Haywood that started three years, Chris Hyatt uh, is one of the hardest hitters that I've ever coached, and uh, he'll be a linebacker. Uh, you know, we've got some guys there that, that have really been waiting in the wings to play, and, and I think because of that, they've got a little bit more fire in them, a little bit more focus than what we had last year. So, you know, we're looking forward to it. Barton will open the year at number six in the Hooton's poll, and Carlisle at number 11. They are still two of Class AA's elite programs, but this may be the final season for Barton's legendary coach, Frank McClellan. Tragedy struck this summer in Barton when all-conference end Jeremy Whaley was struck by a car and killed. After fielding just 16 players last year, there will be no more than 20 Bears this fall in Barton. Carlisle coach James Clayton has said this will be his last season with the Bison. Carlisle has won 10 league titles in the past 12 years under Clayton. If they challenge Harding Academy in Augusta for the 6AA crown this fall, senior Matt Campbell will need to excel in his first season to play varsity quarterback. Campbell rushed for 700 yards and 17 touchdowns last year as a tailback and led the Bison with 149 tackles at linebacker. Senior fullback Cody Simpson rumbled for 1,200 yards and 14 touchdowns. 
The 6AA is six deep in quality teams, including Hooton's preseason number 14, Hazen, and number 18, Desart. Hazen is led by senior speedster Jacob Adams, who was slowed a year ago by a hamstring injury. Adams still ran for more than 1,500 yards. The Desart backfield will feature all-conference quarterback Brandon Stidham and running back Markel Rowland. Third-year head coach Bill Buckner says he'll put his best athletes on defense, including senior linebacker Bradley Sears. And here is a look at Hooton's Arkansas Football Class 2A preseason rankings. Harding Academy, numero uno. The Wildcats have been pointing for this year for quite some time. Junction City's number two. Then it's Augusta, Ryzen, and Charleston at number five. The Tigers should take the 1AA by storm this year, but how far can they go in November? That's the big question for Charleston. Barton starts the second five. There's Hampton and the Little Johns. Hughes is at number nine. Senior tailback Andre Walker over at Hughes. He has 4-5 speed and ran for 280 yards last year against Class 3A Pulaski Academy. Gurdon rounds out the top 10, and Carlisle starts the second 10. The Indians go after a fifth straight league title this year up at Mark Tree, but newcomer Hughes will have a say-so, and who wins that 3-double-A? Mineral Springs is number 13. The Hornets have a stronghold on the 7-double-A West. Hazen's 14, and the Rattlers are 15. The Buckaroos are at number 16. Smackover will be improved. We'll find out how much the first couple of weeks of the season when they travel to Mineral Springs and Bernice, Louisiana. Jesseville checks in at number 17, then it's Desark, Salem, and the Miners round out the top 20. Now, the Arkansas Department of Higher Education Spirit Student of the Week. Being a cheerleader at some schools is something special, but when you're a part of the national champs at Sylvan Hills, you're very special. I usually do about five hours of cheerleading a day. Dana Devine is co-captain of the 36-member cheerleading squad at Sylvan Hills High School. The senior has to be responsible for the well-being of a highly driven group of youngsters. Sometimes the flyers get down or tumblers and you have a bad day and they just need a lot of lifting up. Dana enjoys cheering more than anything else, but it doesn't rule her life. She's able to keep her grades well above average. Grades are very important to me and you can't be a good cheerleader and get into college without having the grades. A day in the life with Dana is both upbeat and up-tempo with her academics and her activities. It has not been that bad at all. I, I really like being busy. If I wasn't busy, I wouldn't know what I would do because I've just been busy my whole life. Dana gives credit to her older sister who showed Dana how to keep everything in perspective. She just really motivated me to make good the grades and she kind of showed me how to do cheerleading and make the grades and because she was very active in sports too. On behalf of the State Department of Higher Education, congratulations to our Spirit Scholars and to all students. Keep that grade point up. We've got some scholarships waiting on you. Sonic's new cream slush is like a cool breeze. Hurry in for the smooth frozen favorite. Try a cream slush and lots of fruity flavors like strawberry or new raspberry. I need a vacation. Spin on in for a juicy Sonic burger with crispy onion rings for just $2.99. Thanks again for watching Hooton's Arkansas Football this week and we look forward to seeing you again next Saturday with another preseason show right before we get into the 2002 season. And don't forget, it will start in grand style here at War Memorial Stadium on Labor Day. Those six teams playing each other four days earlier than all the other teams in Arkansas. And we look forward to seeing you here again next Saturday night. We'll talk more about the kickoff classic and more about the 2002 high school season here on Hooton's Arkansas Football.